What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally going to finish this Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. I know it's been a long time coming and I'm glad you guys have stuck with me. Today we are going to focus on drawing the wheels. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it, get started by making sure we are on the correct layer, our rear wheel layer. So we've got that selected. Now we're going to select our ellipse tool or L on your keyboard. And if you've been watching my videos now for some time, this is kind of how I start off my wheels. I do a series of ellipses that essentially make the uh, barrel of the wheel, if you will. So I'm just kind of following some of the highlights and the shadows here with these ellipses making each one a little smaller as I go until I'm finished with the barrel itself. And not all of these ellipses are going to be the exact same shape, so you can adjust them at any point, whether it's just vertical adjustments or horizontal adjustments. All right, that looks good. So now we're going to start selecting our fill color for these roughly using the eyedropper tool. So what I'll do is I'll select the ellipse, use the eyedropper tool to pick up a color in the uh, actual photograph. And if I need to adjust it later, I will. But this is just to get a baseline of where to draw uh, the face of the wheel and all the highlights and the shadows. So I'm gonna select those. I'm gonna hit Command G on my keyboard, make that a group of ellipses, and I'm gonna title that Barrel. I can go ahead and turn that off and we can come back to it later. So now we're going to get out our pen tool and we are going to start drawing the, uh, the face of the wheel. So basically I'm just going to go around by making anchor points, dragging the mouse out to create that line and follow along the face of the wheel. Sometimes it's a little hard to see, so you kind of got to make it up as you go along, but uh, you guys get the point. So we'll curve around the barrel of the wheel there, and we'll get ready to bring that up to a close. Okay, now once again, I'm going to get out my eyedropper tool and just basically select uh, a rough color for the face of the wheel. Again, I always adjust these colors later. This is just to start to get an idea uh, of the color that it could be. Usually the color doesn't vary that much. All right, so now back to the pen tool. Let's go ahead and start drawing some of the shadows that are being cast on this wheel. And I'm gonna stick with shapes that are all gonna have the same kind of color tone. That way I'm not jumping around and drawing, say, like each segment of the wheel individually. We're basically focusing on all of the shadows and then we'll do all of the highlights and then all of the lug nuts and so forth. So anything that you think is going to have the same color, go ahead and get that drawn now. And here you can add as much detail or as little detail as you like. Uh, sometimes you know, adding too many details, like getting every single line perfect, isn't really going to show up when you zoom out and see the whole thing as a bigger picture. Okay. Now I'm going to go through with my direct selection tool, or my selection tool, sorry, and I'm going to select all of these shapes, get my eyedropper tool, and select one color for all of those shapes so that they are all the same color. Awesome. Now I'm just going to go over to the layers palette and use uh, the eye area and just turn off all of those and see how it looks. Looks okay. Now I can go ahead and move on to the next tonal structure here, uh, say like a highlight. So I'm basically looking at the wheel and I'm seeing all of the colors that are the same and drawing those at the same time, kind of as a family that they'll all be the same color. So I'm just gonna draw them all at the same time. Since Illustrator picks up 
the same fill and stroke unless you change it, this is very convenient and I can just keep drawing and it'll pick up that same color I selected the first time. Now I cut right through that shadow because I'm going to drag that below that shadow that we draw earlier. So I don't have to worry about being so precise. Okay. One more. Actually, let's make this one a little darker. It's pretty obvious that it's much darker than the others. And when you see that flashing, I'm basically hitting Command Z and I'm undoing that fill. And then you, since I still have the eyedropper tool selected, selecting a tone within there. And then as soon as I feel like it looks right, I just leave it alone. Great. And again here, dragging these uh, shapes that I'm drawing underneath the original shadows that we drew at the very beginning. So for me, there's many different pieces that will eventually make up the wheel. Sometimes I draw too many and I end up omitting some and sometimes I don't draw enough and I need to go back in and really refine um, the detail in the wheel. Basically, I'm kind of looking for what I'm missing. So now that we have all the darker parts starting to draw, I'm going to go ahead and focus on all the highlights from where the sun is casting down onto this wheel and it's getting really kind of like overexposed, if you will. So really hot spots. Um, these will basically be really close to white. You know, and there's not that many on this wheel. And even if they're small, don't leave them out. All right, a couple more of these. And we'll be ready to zoom out and take a look. Great. And for the, those two last shapes, I'm just using a simple stroke. So I'm drawing a line and assigning a stroke. I'll show you a little bit more about what I mean here in just a second. So let's finish the highlight on this lug nut here. I'm going to bring up my stroke dialog box and for the profile I'm going to select the one that's kind of bigger on one end and pointy on the other. Now I'm going to flip it using these two triangles there. And if we zoom in you can see that it doesn't quite match up. See how I flip and then we'll flip again so the large uh, area of the stroke is down there. Now we'll increase the stroke to two and that worked out perfectly. That little tiny speck that you see where it kind of overlaps, obviously at this size, you're not going to see that. So it doesn't really matter. All right. So now we're going to focus on the barrel of the wheel. Since we just kind of drew the highlights and the shadows on the face of the wheel, let's focus on the barrel and let's start by drawing a few of these highlights. Going back through with the direct selection tool, as always, I didn't like that curve. So I uh, kind of went back through and, and fixed that a little bit. Now, as you can see in my layer palette, I have uh, one of the eye areas turned off. So I usually what that means is it's I don't want to be distracted by a previous shape. So I'll turn it off, turn it back on later when I need it. And see, I, I go back through that first shape just didn't really care for it. Okay, so let's draw the uh, shadow that casts over here. And I want to be able to see everything underneath of it, but I don't want to change its opacity. So let's select like a dark grayish blue and we'll bring up the transparency dialog box and select the blending mode to multiply. This automatically makes it much, much darker, but you're not lightening the opacity to see through it. You're basically removing it. It filters the white. So now I'll go through with my direct selection tool and make sure this is right up and snug next to that part of the face that meets the wheel. I don't want to see any white shining through there because that would be distracting. If anything, it's better to have a little overlap like this because you're not going to see that when you're zoomed out all the way. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks like a realistic shadow. Let's move to the next segment of the wheel. Now see Illustrator's picking up that dark blue again. So I'm gonna select my eyedropper tool and make sure that I've got the correct color selected. Now here we've got a darker color, same thing. Great, that 
that section was pretty easy. This section looks a little more complicated. There's a couple more shadows and some curvy lines. So moving forward, um, I'll draw that base layer, which is kind of that brownish gray. Then on top of that, I'm going to draw these darker shadows. So that's why I've turned off that shape I just drew. It's not like it's gone. I didn't delete it. I've just turned it off so that it's not distracting. And I'll draw these other shapes on top. So when I'm ready to see it again, I'll go back and turn it on. That's looking pretty good. Starting to look kind of realistic. I don't want to overcomplicate this wheel since this was the uh, first illustration using gradient mesh. I kind of want that to speak for itself. And I don't necessarily need to make sure that these wheels, I'm trying to essentially reinvent the wheel. I don't need to do that here because it's a relatively simple wheel and it doesn't need to be overcomplicated. So now what I'm doing is going through and selecting some of the shapes that have the same type tonal structure and making sure that those colors match with each other. All right, so I'm just going to turn off pretty much everything we've drawn on this layer. Uh, I don't want to create a new layer for the lug nuts, but I don't want to see everything I've just drawn. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool again, and I'm going to hold and drag that ellipse tool out to create a nice little oval for the shadow part of this lug nut. Since the shadow is underneath the actual lug nut, I'm going to draw the shadow first and then layer the highlight on top. And I'm going to draw each one of these individually because they might be a little bit of a different shape and it's a lot easier to do it this way than copy paste and adjust. All right, so that wraps up those. I'm going to turn those off and move on to the highlight. So another ellipse, we're going to select gradient for the fill. And then now I'm just going to go through and make uh, adjustments in the gradient dialog box to the colors of the highlight and the shadow. I kind of want these to look a little silvery. So we've got kind of a light gray at the top with a darker gray at the bottom. Now using the gradient tool, I'm going to make sure and choosing radial gradient, I'm going to make sure that I'm drawing it out exactly how I want so that it's a little off center. And that looks really good. That looks believable enough. So let's just copy and paste that, make the necessarily, necessarily, necessary adjustments to size and holding down option and dragging, we're going to be able to copy that five times over. And with that radial gradient, those look really good. Those look pretty believable. Again, these are very, very small details on this car. Now the center cap, simple ellipse, and we're going to select that bright yellow with a black stroke. And that looks really good. I'm liking the way that looks. I think I'm going to call that good on this wheel. But as always, I cannot help myself to go back and add a few more little details. I want to make sure all of these lines just line up perfectly and adjust them so I'm not seeing weird highlight pick up, pickups like that that would stand out pretty bad. Uh, so basically just using the direct selection tool, making sure I've draw a couple more highlights on the lug nuts from, again, that light is shining right down on this wheel. And now I'm going to select everything we've just drawn, everything in the rear wheel layer, and I'm going to option click and drag this over to the front. And let's just see if we can get away with copying this wheel so we don't have to draw it again. Now let's line everything up. We got to shrink it down because of perspective. Yep. And it's not going to be a perfect circle. So I don't need to worry about constraining the proportions on this. I can just kind of click and drag to adjust how I, how I see fit. And I am, I think that's pretty good. I think we're going to be able to get away with that. Uh, not always are you able to copy and paste, uh, each wheel, but, um, in this case we were able to do that. All right, I think that's where we're going to end this illustration today. If you're noticing anything missing, it's the Prancing Pony Ferrari logo. I forgot to screen record how I did that. Basically, I went to Google and I got an image of the Prancing Pony because I wasn't going to draw it based off of this photograph. It, I needed it on the rear trunk lid and the wheels and the uh, front fender. So instead of drawing it four different times in each different place, I drew it once and then copied and pasted it where I needed it, uh, adjusting the size and kind of perspective to, to fit over 
the photograph itself. So we're gonna end this illustration here today. I really do appreciate you following along and sticking it out until the end. You guys know who you are. Big, uh, big thanks to that. And I've got a special treat for the, uh, the next series. Uh, it follows a relatively famous car if you're a fan of drifting and a fan of YouTube. So uh, stay, stay tuned for that. We are going to be drawing a Laurel. Uh, so I'm really excited to show you guys that tutorial. Also, I'd like to let you know that you can always email me at thatcarartist at gmail.com or check out my Instagram page because I am open to commission and I would love to draw your car. So hit me up uh, and then if I do draw your car, chances are it's gonna make it to a YouTube series. I always provide a JPEG and I provide vector art so you guys can blow this up as big as you want and plaster your uh, whole wall in your house or garage if you'd like. So as always, thanks for watching and hitting that like button. If you're interested in more Adobe Illustrator CC tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Also be sure to check out my Instagram and Patreon pages, which are linked below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh yeah. One more thing. I almost forgot. I just covered a local drift event and I will be making a video based off of the drift event next. So don't, uh, if you're here just for the illustration, that's great, but I highly suggest you watch a lot of the local guys hit their uh, first drift event of the season, and I will release that shortly.